All right, I think we got our technical issues figured out here. Hi, Girl Scouts and viewers. Thanks for tuning in to our Tap into the Herd series again. We are going to wait a couple of minutes to let all our friends get in here, grab their snacks, and to join us. So I'm just going to walk into the other room here and let you see some of our horse information on the walls while we wait for all of our friends to join us today. Make sure as you join, you type hi in the chat so that we know you're here. Hi, guys. So for those of you that are just joining us, we are giving our friends a couple of minutes here in the beginning to join before we get started with today's video. Hi, Liz. Hi, I hope everyone out there is doing great. Such a nice day today, and we're really excited to bring you today's video. See a couple more people tuning in. We're gonna give it just a couple of minutes. I'm gonna flip the camera around so we can look at some of the stuff we have on the walls while we're waiting. Here's a sneak peek into what we'll be covering today. Hi, Sophie. All right, we got some horse colors over here. Like I said, we're just waiting for all of our friends to join before we get started. We got some riding disciplines back here. And we got some breeds over here. And lastly, some markings. All right, I'm gonna flip our camera back around. All right, so I think we have enough viewers that we're gonna go ahead and get started. Like I said, thanks for tuning in today to our next episode in our series of Tap Into The Herd. Um, in case you missed last week's Tap Into the Herd, it is still on our Facebook page. You can go ahead and check that out. In that video, we did an equestrian tour of our amazing facility. And we also talked about some of the programming that we offer here, including our seasonal programming, our summer camp, and we also talked about our new Adopt a Horse program that we just recently launched. So... Is anyone here this week that was here last week? I'll wait and see if there's anybody that's returning from last week. Nope, no returners. All right, well, last week we featured Ricky Bobby and Jazzy. So this week we're gonna have two new horses that we'll introduce to you in just a moment. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you will know these faces when you see them. So really quickly, I'm going to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. My name is Jessica G. I am the Assistant Equestrian Program Specialist here at Cap Tampawingo Equestrian Center. And I'm gonna flip the camera and Julie M is Hi. over here and she is the Jayden. Yep, and Jaden sorry can't forget Jaden and she is the equestrian program specialist here and we are excited to bring you today's video um, both of us are here today because when working with horses because they are such big animals with minds of their own it's really important that you're never alone you want to make sure that you're always being safe, that you're with somebody when you're working with horses. And so that's why the both of us are here today so that we can make sure we're being safe. But we're also going to make sure that we practice our social distancing measures again today. 
All right. So in today's video, we will be doing a tack up demonstration, both English and Western. So we are gonna head out into the barn and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Oh, oh, Sophie was here last week. Awesome, okay, well thanks for coming back. All right. So these two are our special guests today. Can anyone tell me either of their names? So um, this, <laughs> this little guy here, he says, hello. He is a pony and he is a camp favorite. He is known for his brand on the other side, which is an arrow up. And then this handsome guy over here as well is also a camp favorite and he is a horse. So does anyone know who either of these horses are? Back up so you can see them. Does anyone know who either of these horses are? Oh, hi Jennifer. Oh, that's so very sweet. So this guy and this guy. Does anyone know who they are? Well, this pony on the left, his name is Phoenix. And this horse over here on the right, his name is Flash. And both of these horses are really known for their um, expertise and, oh, yep, <laughs> Flash, Chloe says. Yep, that's right. So these horses are known for their expertise in barrel racing and pole bending, which are some riding disciplines that you can train horses to do. Um, but these horses also are great because they're all around horses. They're good for beginners, intermediate, and even advanced riders. They have something to teach all girls. All right, so before we can get started tacking up our horses, we do want to demonstrate what we call haltering, leading, and tying. And the reason we want to demonstrate this today is because if you were going to tack up your horse, you would actually have to go get them most of the times from the pasture. And so we have to learn how to be able to catch our horses in order to bring them in. So Julie is getting Phoenix ready for this demonstration. Yep, that is Flash Liz, very good. Oh, I'm sure he remembers you. All right, so like I mentioned, you would have to what we call catch your horse first before you can get bring them in and get them ready to be tacked up. So as you'll notice, Julie has put what we call the lead rope She's gonna show you that. The lead rope is around Phoenix's neck. And the reason she has it around his neck is because if Phoenix were to try to walk away from her, she would be able to control him from leaving. So once she has that lead rope around her horse's neck, she's now gonna take the bottom of her halter and slip it over Phoenix's nose. And Phoenix is actually a really good boy and he helps you out by putting his nose down. So the next thing she's gonna do is she's gonna take the strap that's in her right hand, take it behind his ears, and she's going to buckle it, just like she's demonstrating now. And she wants it on there, just so it's on there tight enough, doesn't have to be too tight or too loose. And now she has caught her horse. So now that she has caught her horse, now she needs to learn how to walk or lead her horse. But one thing she wants to make sure she does not do is she does not want to wrap the lead rope around her hand like she's demonstrating right now. The reason you don't want to do that, because if something were to startle Phoenix and he were to take off, now Julie's hand is trapped <laughs> and she might get dragged by her horse. Okay, so you never ever want to wrap, excuse me, the lead rope around your hand. 
You also don't want to hold the lead rope all the way at the very end because if you were to do so, you could see there's a lot of slack hanging on the ground and Julie could step on it or Phoenix could step on it and it would pull down on his nose and that would hurt, okay? You could also trip over it too and that obviously wouldn't be good. <laughs> you also wanna make sure you're not standing too close at the end of your lead rope. So you don't wanna be standing all the way right close to Phoenix. Can you demonstrate, Julie? Thank you. You don't wanna be standing too close to Phoenix because now you're in the way of him walking so he's going to step on you. Also, you could get your fingers caught in these little loops and hooks on his halter and it could pinch your finger and that would really hurt. Okay. So we're going to switch to our second type of halter and lead rope, which is a rope halter. So this was a nylon halter that we were demonstrating with. And now we're going to show you how to do a rope halter and it's Quite similar, but there's one main difference. The reason that we use rope halters here sometimes is just because you can adjust it to fit the horse. So you can use them on more horses than you would some of these nylon halters because you have to fit those to the horse. So like this one that Phoenix is wearing is a pony size, so it wouldn't fit Flash over there. Okay, so now it's still the same thing. She's gonna slip the bottom of her halter over Phoenix's nose. He's very helpful, drops it in there like a good boy. But this time she's gonna tie it up and she's gonna show you how she ties it. So she pulls it through, she goes behind and through the loop that she made. So you wanna make sure that that tail is always pointing away from the horse. If it was pointing forward, it could poke the horse in the eye, okay? And then you could tuck it in too so it doesn't flop around. So now, Julie is going to gather up her lead rope and show you how to properly hold it. Okay, so then Julie's also going to make sure that she's not standing too far behind Phoenix because if she stands way behind Phoenix, Phoenix is now leading her, basically, and she doesn't have control of him. She also like doesn't want to stand right in front of him because then if he has no place to walk and he's gonna knock her down. So she wants to stand right about at his shoulder and keep a good distance between her and him so that way they're being respectful of each other's space. You also notice she's gonna have her hand a couple of inches underneath Phoenix's chin so that way she has control of, her, oh, control of his head, excuse me. So when she goes to walk, she's going to look where she wants to go and just walk. She doesn't want to look back at her horse because if she did, she might run into something. So she's just going to look where she's going. And then when she needs to turn, she's just going to turn and see Phoenix is respectfully following at a nice distance. This is a good example of leading a horse. Very good. Good boy, Phoenix. All right. So now that we know how to halter and lead our horse, now we need to learn how to tie them. Because when we go to tack them up, we have to tie them to a tie ring. So I'm gonna go on the other side so I can get a little bit better of a view. Okay, Julie is going to demonstrate how we tie. So one thing I wanna say before she starts tying is it's really important that when you tie, you tie with a quick release knot. And the reason we tie with a quick release knot is that if your horse were to get startled or to pull back, you can pull it out really quickly and that way your horse is free. Okay, so Julie's gonna demonstrate how to tie her quick release knot. You can do this a couple of different ways, but as long as it's quick release, that's what's most important. Okay, she's got her loop. She's bringing her slack around and she pulled it through. So now you'll notice this tail is really long and it's hanging on the ground. So what Julie's going to do so that no one steps on it She's gonna do what we call a daisy chain. Basically loop your loop, just like that. So now, if Phoenix were to get into a situation, Julie can pull that with just one hand and Phoenix is free. Okay, so that's really, really important. All right, awesome. Thank you, Julie and Phoenix. That was a very good demonstration. So now that we know how to 
halter, lead, and tire horse, the next thing you would do, <laughs> Phoenix is like, yep, we do. <laughs> the next thing we would do is we would groom our horses. But for the purposes of today's video, just so it wouldn't get too long, we've already went ahead, <laughs> Phoenix is agreeing, we've already went ahead and groomed these horses. Oh, now he's gonna play with the shovel and get in trouble. We've already went ahead and groomed these horses. And in case you're interested or in case you missed it, we do have a YouTube channel that we posted a how to groom a horse video that you can check out. And it was actually shared on this Facebook page. So if you're interested, you can go check that out. But these horses have been groomed. Um, so it's really important that you do brush them out before you tack them up. Okay, now, here are our two saddles that we will be using today to tack up. Can anyone tell me which one is the English saddle and which one is the Western saddle? Anyone want to take a guess? I will tell you that English saddles tend to be anywhere from 10 to 25 pounds and a western saddle can weigh anywhere from 25 to about 60 pounds and the reason that they have such major differences in their weight Peyton yep the one on the left is English that's awesome very good the reason that these saddles weigh um, so much differently is because they're used for different purposes so as Peyton said this English saddle right here um, would be used more for possibly show jumping, dressage, eventing, or even horse racing, if you've ever seen that. And those saddles actually weigh less than this. Blue, English, horn, western. Yep, very good, Natalie. Yep. So western saddles are used more for leisure and trail riding or barrel racing or even ranch riding. So that's why they weigh so much more. Yep, Carol, the one on the right is the Western. That's awesome. You guys are good at this. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to tell you about these different parts of the English saddle, because that's the one I'm going to be demonstrating tacking up. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to, excuse me, going to set the phone down so that Julie can pick it up. Here. 
And then we also, of course, have our stirrups. They're sometimes called stirrup irons. We have our stirrup leathers right here. This is called your stirrup keeper. This is where you keep your stirrup leather, your stirrup strap. And then also underneath here, we have what are called fillets. And these are the straps that you will use to attach what is called your girth. So this right here is your girth. This is what helps keep the saddle from slipping and falling. Right. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I go to tack up my horse is I'm gonna get my saddle pad. I wanna go back and mention, we've been using the word tack a lot. In case you don't know what tack is, it is what you use to ride your horse. So that's of course your saddle pad, your saddle, and your bridle. So this is your bridle here. So I'm first going to grab my saddle pad and I'm going to walk over to my horse. I don't want to throw it up at him so that I don't startle him. So I'm going to come up here, let him know I'm coming. Let him sniff it if he's interested. Some horses like to see what it is. He's used to this because he's been tacked up so many times. I'm going to go ahead and set my saddle pad gently on his back. One thing I want to make sure when I'm putting my saddle pad on is that I'm putting it up high enough that it covers his withers. His withers is this high point here in between his shoulder blades. Okay, so you want to make sure that part is covered so it's protected. If I were to put it too far back, and then have to slide it forward, it would go against his hair. Okay, so I'll make sure I, I can put it a little bit too far forward so I can slide it back if I need to. You also wanna make sure that the stitching is right down the center of his spine. Okay? So once I feel like my saddle, put, saddle pad is in the right place, I'm going to grab my saddle. Now, English saddles are a lot lighter than Western saddles, but that doesn't mean I just want to throw it up on his back because I don't want to hurt him. So I'm going to gently place it down on his back. So when you go to set a saddle down, some of the leather and flaps might get flipped underneath, just like this. So you want to go around and check and make sure everything's laying nice and flat. So I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm going to keep my hand on flash while I go to the other side to let them know where I am. And as you can see here, same thing. So I need to let that out. Make sure it's sitting, laying flat. Okay. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do what we call tent the pad. So I'm going to stick my hand in here and sort of lift that pad up into the gullet here. And the reason that we do that is one for airflow. So now the air can flow through here. It also relieves some of the pressure off of his back here. And then also if horses have mane that sticks in there, it keeps it from rubbing. Okay. So now I have to go back and grab my girth, but you can stay there because I'll be coming right back. So English girths are a little bit different from western girths or cinches as they're called and that they're usually not left on the saddle you usually have to attach them so you can see here there is an end with elastic and there's an end with leather that doesn't move so because i'm going to be adjusting from the left side i want to make sure that the elastic is on the left side so that i can readjust if it had elastic on both sides it wouldn't matter So when I go to attach the girth, I'm going to go through my saddle pad here, and I'm going to put it through my billets. So these are the billets that I mentioned earlier. There's three, but you only need to use two. Depending on what you're doing, you'll use either the first or the third, or the second or the third, but for today's purposes, we're just going to do the first and the third. So I'm going to take it through my buckles and run it up. You want to make sure they're both even. So however many I go up on this side, I want to make sure I go up the same on the other side. Okay. Also want to make sure 
that there's a strap here on some saddle pads. You want to keep it around your billets. And it's just to help keep your saddle pad from slipping and keep things nice and in place. Okay. You open flash? Actually, this is very exciting to be on camera. It's very photogenic. All right. So now that my girth is attached on this side, I'm going to go back to the other side while keeping my hand on the entire time. And now I need to attach my girth to this side. Okay, so I'm going to reach under his belly and grab the girth. I'm going to do the same thing on this side that I did on the other side. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. All right, so we're going to run it up. Just like that. And so everything's laying nice and flat. His girth is attached. And now his saddle won't fall off. One thing I want to say is I'm not going to make him really, really tight um, in the beginning. Just because that makes horses um, what we call cinchy or girthy. And that means they don't enjoy having their girth put on. So I'm just going to leave it tight enough that it won't fall off. But I would tighten it again before I got on. All right, so now that I got his saddle on, I have to do his bridle. And of course, take him away from his food, which he's not gonna be a big fan of. <laughs> I'm gonna take him over here so you can see a little bit better. So the last piece of equipment that I need to add is called a bridle. And this is how I control the horse when I'm riding it. So on an English bridle, there is what we call crown piece, a brow band, cheek pieces, a nose band, the bit, which is the piece of metal that goes into their mouth, and of course, your reins, which is how you control your horse. So there's a lot of similarities and differences between English and Western bridles. One main, main difference is the fact of this nose band here. And also, the reins tend to be a little bit shorter, or sometimes much shorter, in an English saddle, or excuse me, in an English bridle, and they're almost always connected. Western reins sometimes are not connected. Beth says she loves Flash. Aw, we love Flash too. He's a big sweetheart. Okay, so in order to do Flash's bridle, I have to take the halter off of his nose, but I don't want to just let him free because then he can walk off on me. So I would put the halter around his neck here, tied really loosely so it could get off if I needed it to. And then I'm going to catch his nose. I'm going to take the reins over his head so that way they're out of the way and they are not on the ground where he can step on them. So the next thing I'm going to do, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to guide the bit into his mouth. So bits, if used correctly, do not hurt the horse. Because horses actually have a gap right here that says, ah, <laughs> they have a gap right here where they don't have any teeth. And that's where the bit sits. So it doesn't hurt them if it's used correctly. So I'm going to ask him to take the bit. Flash is really good about it. Because ah, he takes the bit. And then I'm going to push his ears forward to take the bridle over. And then I'm going to attach his nose piece here behind the leather. And the reason I held it in the beginning is just so that it's out of the way, so I'm not actually poking him in the eyes with leather as I'm trying to get the bit into his mouth. So the next thing that I have to do is I need to attach my throat latch. So that's the piece that goes under his chin here, or his throat, excuse me. So I'm going to attach the throat latch, just like that. 
you buckle it, and then you secure it. So I can still get about a fist in there so it's not too tight that it's choking him, and it's not too loose that it's hanging down where he could possibly get his foot in it. And then the last thing I need to do is his nose band. This buckles just like your throat latch. Make sure everything's sitting correctly. And voila, Mr. Flash is all tacked up in his English attire, ready to be ridden. Good job, Flash. So before we switch to our Western demonstration, I'm going to take Flash's bridle off so that way he can go back to eating his hay. He did such okay. a nice job for us that we want to reward him with that. Good boy, Flash. Yeah. Very good boy. All right. So I just undo everything I did. And then when I go to take the bridle off of his head, I just let him drop the bit. I don't want to knock his teeth, so he just spits it out. Good boy. And then reattach my halter and my lead rope. <laughs> My goodness. All that hard work he did just made him so tired. <laughs> so I'm just reattaching my rope halter and then I'm going to go tie flash back up. He's confused because he's like, wait, I'm supposed to be ridden right now. <laughs> Setting you down over here. All right, so now we are switching over to our Western tack up. So I'm giving Julie just a moment to get set up. And then she's going to take it away with a Western tack up demonstration with Phoenix. Okay. A lot oh, of the... I got to flip it. I didn't know you were ready. All right, here's Julie. Hello, everybody. A lot of the parts on the saddle are the same. So what Jeff went over is what you have on a, on a Western saddle as well. So um, this is a... He, as Jess said, he runs barrels, poles, and this is the type of saddle that we use for that. Uh, there's many different uh, kinds of Western saddles, but this is one we commonly use here. Um, so you have the cinch. She said on the English saddle it's taken off. So we have the cinch, and it's tied. And we can adjust the cinch on both sides of this saddle by having this uh, stirrup leather here, or the cinch leather, uh, so that we can adjust from both sides to make sure that on the cinch, this goes right in the middle underneath on his belly to make sure that it's even on both sides. So it's not pulled too tight one way or the other. This is how we leave our saddles when we untap. We untack so it's, it is put together properly. There's nothing hanging on the floor that you have to get. Uh, there is a, a leather over here, which is a latigo, and we put it on the saddle so that you could just pull it out. And this one hasn't been done that way. 
but I'll show you, I'll demonstrate how we do that. So when we're putting the saddle away, this is still on the horse, and I'll show you that later. You pull through, you loop it together, you wrap, and then you put your end through. So that's how we put it away. So that when we're tacking the horse, when we're tacking Phoenix, I could just pull it out and it just drops down for me to grab a hold of. Phoenix is making sure that I'm demonstrating properly. Sophie used to ride Western, that's awesome. That's Majority of our riding here is done Western, um, but we do have a camp this summer that we are hosting, which is called Saddle Switch Up, which will be featuring English saddles, and that's for 7th through 12th grade. All right, so just like Flash here, we're going to put on a saddle pad. The saddle pad, you can tell the front, it has a withers relief, that's what they call it here. And it's rounded in the back so that this saddle is rounded so it fits his back and there's not a lot of extra because he is a pony and he doesn't have a whole lot of back length to make sure that it fits his back and it's not poking him on his, on his rump when he's riding. So it makes the horse comfortable and he'll, he'll thank you for that. I'm going to ask him to move over. I always say hello to my horse before I saddle. They like to smell it sometimes and see uh, who else has worn their saddle pad. So I'm going to put it up like Jess. I'm going to put it up forward and slide it back into place. The spine of the pad is in line with his backbone as well. So there's a split right here. It tells you right where the middle is. It's right in the middle of his backbone. And it is just above his shoulder, right in the middle of his shoulder is the front of the pad. Okay? So, I'm going to, just like Jessica, we're going to put the saddle on, but we want to make sure that we don't just throw it up there, because if we throw it up there, it'll land on the other side, and they have a blind spot, two blind spots, one is in the front, can anybody tell me where the left, the other one is? and they can't see on that side if you're on this side, especially if you're right in front of them. And the other one, somebody can tell us? We'll have to wait and, we'll wait and see. Yep. Okay. So, just... so I'm going to, since I have all of this strap, the, set, the stirrup leather, I'm gonna put over the horn. Can't do that with an English saddle because there's no horn. And I'm going to put all of this up here so that it doesn't hit Phoenix on the other side. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick up my saddle and I'm going to set it nicely on his back. I'm just going to pick it up and put it down on his back gently. I'm going to make sure that the back, if you can see, if the back of the saddle is in the center, See these two line up? Here's the center of the saddle, here's the center of the pad. So you wanna make sure it's right in the middle. We're also going to tent his pad. Let me put these down gently. I'm gonna tent his pad, just like on the English saddle. I'm going to let down his girth and I hit him in the bone, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, buddy. But you wanna make sure that you don't do that because it makes them less willing to be saddled if something like that happens. Or if you just throw it up there like you see in Westerns. You know, they just throw it up there and tack up their horse, but we wanna be kind to our horses, so. Right, right, Phoenix? Okay. So I'm going to take my leather to this point where I can just pull it straight out. This I can get out of my way. For demonstration purposes, it helps too. 
So I, for safety reasons, are gonna stand facing his rear end. So when, because of the blind spots that we have, I wanna make sure that I keep the back of my hand on his belly and reach for the girth so he knows I'm the one reaching over there, that it's not something else trying to get him. I'm going to put it through the D-ring on a cinch. I'm gonna bring it down. I'm just gonna make it just tight enough, just like Flash, just tight enough that I can keep the saddle on. I'm gonna go back through. He's a pony and he has a lot of leather here, so we I could go through one more time, but I'm going to just do once for demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to tie a cowboy knot and, or safety knot and that will keep my saddle from coming off. Because there's holes in the leather and there's a, there's a, a fork down here that will go into one of the holes and hold your saddle on that way. But if they air up and they get real puffy and then they let out all their air and you have a very loose saddle. So you wanna make sure if it's done this way, it's not going to come off the horse by accident. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna make a seven. Here's your seven. I'm gonna go across. I'm gonna go up through the back of the D ring. I'm gonna bring it all the way up and I'm going to tuck it right down in that little pocket. And I'm gonna put the, the billet, what's left of the cinch strap in here so it stays out of his way and it's not hitting him on his leg. So I'm gonna let his stirrup down. And you can see how the saddle's in the right position, his pad is in the right position, and the shape of the saddle matches his, his pad. And you can see that it's not interfering, like if he was loping, it would, if it was back here, it would be poking him on the behind. So that's why we make sure that we tack up our horses properly. So to get him ready to ride, we're gonna put his bridle on as well. So here's his bridle, and there's some differences between, obviously, between a bridle, an English bridle, and a Western bridle. This actually is a one-eared bridle, so it doesn't have the brow band, but it has an ear. That's why they call it a one-eared bridle. One ear goes through it. This is the cheek pieces. This is the bit, the metal that goes into his mouth. This is a curb strap. It holds it in his mouth, but is not tight. And then you have reins. These are sport reins. They're all one piece. Just like an English uh, setup, this is all one piece as well. You can have a bridle that has split reins that you can ride what split reins normally we tie them. Uh, so that way that one, you don't drop your one rein and then you can only do circles that way. So Sally you, says, great job ladies. <laughs> guy for taking his bridle. He really helps you out. I'm going to hold on to the reins because like Jessica said, we don't want the reins to fall on the floor for me to step on or trip over or for him to trip over. Because if I have that bit in his mouth and he steps on it, he's going to help me out right now. So I'm going to catch his nose. He drops his head really nicely. He's looking for the bit. I'm gonna let him take it. Good boy. I'm gonna dip his ear into his bridle. I'm gonna dip his ear forward. I'm not gonna rake his ear back because that's not very nice to your horse to do that. Then I'm gonna put the reins up on his saddle so he doesn't step on them as well. 
And this, this does not have the throat latch strap because his ear holds his bridle on his head. See his one ear in here? And so he's ready to ride. Right, Phoenix? You ready to run some barrels? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Julie and Phoenix, for demonstrating that. Oh, your mom writes English, that's amazing, that's awesome. I was, you just led me into my next question. I was getting ready to ask everyone if they've ridden before, which type have they ridden in? Have you ridden in an English saddle or have you ridden in a Western saddle and which do you prefer? So once again, this is Flash in his English saddle, in case you are just now tuning in. This is Phoenix in his Western saddle, and we talked about a lot of the differences that there are in these saddles today. Western, okay, uh, yep. One last look, there's an English saddle with Flash. There's your Western saddle with Phoenix, and you can do a lot of different things in both saddles. It just kind of all comes down to preference and what riding activity that you are doing. Peyton says Western, she was there last year. Dawn says Western as well. We got a lot of Westerns. That's good. <laughs> Liz rides Western, but mom does both and likes English. Okay, yep. Most people have a preference um, but like I said, there's a lot of benefits to riding in both. All right, well, I am going to wrap things up for us as we are going to bring this video to a close. You used to ride Western? Okay, that's amazing. Um, so we're going to close out this video by saying thank you for tuning in today to our um, second episode in our Tap into the Herd series. Um, make sure to join us again next Friday at noon again for our third and final episode of Tap into the Herd. You can also make sure to check out our YouTube channel. It is GSCI hyphen Camp Tapawingo Equestrian Center. We will be posting videos there quite often and they also get shared on our Girl Scouts of Central Illinois Facebook page so you can make sure to check them out there and we will see you all next week. Don't forget your lunch. Bye Girl Scouts and Bye, viewers. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.